<clears throat> this is the book of Ezekiel chapter 7 beginning at verse 1 and it reads moreover the word of the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahushua came unto me saying also thou son of man thus saith the Lord Yahweh power unto the land of Israel and in the end is come upon the four corners of the land now is the end come upon thee and I will send my anger upon thee and will judge thee according to thy ways and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. Verse four, and my eye shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense thy ways upon thee and thine abominations shall be in the midst of thee and ye shall know that I am the Lord Yahweh. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh shall power and evil and only evil behold is come an end is come the end is come it watcheth for thee behold it is come i want to start off by giving all praises all honor and all glory to call loyam la yahweh by shem yahweh shai by shem racha kodash brakatham i want to say double honors to my apostles the elders of great millstone who teach and do rule well peace and salutations to the akim Across the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than ever. Shalom to the Akwath, as well as the Akim out there listening and learning. Lord, willingly, this is an edifying lesson. Shalom to the Israelite forwarders scattered abroad in the land of other nations, appearing like the other nations, and subscribing to this truth. To you, I say Shalom. It's the brother Yahweh Sop out of the GMS Cleveland Church. I'm a fellow servant coming at you with another lesson through the Spirit, through the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushah. Um, and basically, I came across this article through the Spirit, um, wanted to do a lesson on it. And I started with that Ezekiel chapter 7 because, you know, when it said bad situation, it made me think of um, evil. When you go into the word evil, which is a compound word, e meaning time and ill meaning bad. So bad situation, a bad time, you know. Um, and the scriptures talk about how, um, you know, some of these particular things going on in, in, the, in the last days, uh, you know. You know, um, basically violence, um, pestilences and plagues, uh, uh, war, um, you know, just a, a numerous amounts of things. And one of the, the other things is in Revelations, it talks about, um, you know, how that penny, you know, they take a penny or, or a day's wages because, you know, when you go into that word penny, it goes into the, the um, what's that, the, the Greek word um, denarius. Latin, um, but the Daenerys was a, a coin used in the Roman Empire, and um, that's what a soldier would be paid. Well, um, it would take you a day's pay to purchase bread, you know, to, to basically um, to uh, continue to um, To, to, to basically live, you know what I mean? So, um, with that being said, um, you know, um, we living in some some, 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 some times, unprecedented times, you know, um, you know, this inflation, you know, makes me think about Habakkuk chapter two, um, in regards to, um, you know, it talks about that, that, that thick clay, you know, when it goes into the, the clay, it's going into the debt because you know the United States dollar is a debt note. So you know, um, and like I said, based on you know because of the U.S. or the American dollar, the United States uh, dollar is basically the, the world's petrol dollar because you know in order to buy oil, you know you have to convert your money into U.S. dollars, and that's how America has grown rich and basically. Uh, had a stranglehold over the planet but at the same time you know because American dollars tied to all these other currencies because of that petrol dollar it's going to affect all the other currencies of the nations and you're seeing that now and that's why you have um, leaders like Putin and you know um, I forgot the guy name that's the, the president of China but you got these different leaders of these different nations they're recognizing this and that's why they you know did things like um coming and forming the coalition or the collaboration of, of the BRICS nation. You got these different nations that basically um, wanted to escape the dominance of the United States petrodollar. 
So, uh, so Lucky, I'm trying to drive and get back to, you know, the plantation, and, and as well as do this lesson. So, you know, uh, bear with me, Baba Kasha. So, Lockyer, so um, article um, it's out of uh, it's on my news break, but it's out of um, the Associated Press, and it reads: "Bad situation, soaring U.S. dollar spreads pain worldwide." Because if the United States dollar is being inflated and it's affecting America, and this is the world reserve currency, it's going to affect these 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 nations, what the, these third world countries, these nations that's economies are a lot lower and you know or more impoverished. It says the cost of living in um, Cairo has soared so much that security guard Mustafa Gami Gamal had to send his wife and year old daughter to live with his parents in a village 70 miles south of the Egyptian capital to save money. Gamal, 28, stayed behind working two jobs, sharing an apartment with other young people and eliminating meat from his diet. God damn. The price of everything has been doubled, he said. There was no alternative. Around the world, people are sharing Gamal's pain and frustration. An uh, auto part dealer in Nairobi, a seller of baby clothes in Istanbul, and Istanbul, and a wine importer in Manchester, England, have the same complaint. A surging U.S. dollar makes their local currencies weaker, contributing to skyrocketing prices for everyday goods and services. This is compounding financial distress at a time when families are already facing food and energy crunches tied to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And when you go into this shit, kind of comical because everything is affected. They quick to put that out there. That's propaganda. You get what I'm saying? When you constantly hearing that, and then it's spirit because I was listening to that redacted for a minute, and um, the the, the whole episode is about um propaganda. And then brothers, we did a, a video yesterday. Um, uh, on the brother Yaquan page, um, and it was titled um, "The Lord is a Man of War," and we went into that how Esau demonizes a country through his media to get the people behind him to basically do what he, you know, whatever he had um, planned and plotted, you know, because you know this devil is constantly planning and plotting, <laughs> you know, what I mean? you know, it talks about how he's cunning, you know. A strong dollar makes a bad situation worse than the rest of the world, says S. War. Prasad, a professor of trade policy at Corn Cornell University. Many economists worry that the sharp rise of the dollar is increasing the likelihood of a global recession sometime next year. And this is, you know, being telegraphed and forecast that it's going to be a recession next year. So best believe a lot of those job cuts is going to like probably like it's going to be happening next year. The dollar is up 18% this year and last month hit a 20-year high according to the benchmark ICE US dollar index, which it measures the dollar against a basket of key currencies. The reason for the dollar's rise are no mystery. To combat soaring inflation, US so lucky. to combat soaring US inflation, the Federal Reserve has raised its benchmark short-term interest rate five times this year and is signaling more hikes are likely. That has led to a higher rates on a wide range of U.S. government and corporate bonds, luring investors and driving up the U.S. currency. And, um, you know, I think they said um, they've been raising it by 75 points every, um, like I said, I think the last five times. And this time, they, um, a lot of economists saying they think they're going to raise it 75 plus an extra 50. So um, this is the book of Habakkuk, chapter two, <laughs> you know, because at the end, they, you know, um, these prophecies. You know, these things that were written before time for our learning were set up to um, let us know um, the time we were being. That's what we're waiting for. That's what we're measuring the times by the prophecies. That's how we know where we are and, and, and that we know that we're in the end. This is a book of Habakkuk, chapter two and verse one. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. So this is Habakkuk. It says chastise to cut to cough. I wish I looked in the um I wish I'd have looked in the um blue letter. Uh so lucky. So it says the chastisement, argument, correction, reasoning, reproof, rebuke, reproved. So it says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. So this is Habakkuk basically waiting on a vision from Yahweh Bashim Yahushah. And the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahushah answered me and said, 
write the vision, meaning the prophecy, and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read of it. So when we go out there and prophesy, we don't have to come with no gimmicks. Other <laughs> brother used the statement. He said trying to be like T.I. with these, you know, big, big, gigantic words, you know, you trying to be a wordsmith. You know, we, you know, you try to talk um, well enough that your point gets across. You don't have to be vulgar. But at the same time, you know, like Paul said, um, though I'll be rude and speech i'm not rude in knowledge you know but at the same time you know a man of the lord you know his dialect should be more than just four letter words you know what i mean like you know it's too much information that we have to you know delve into you know you know as far as history these prophecies these scriptures and you know it's just a lot of um you know things we have to actually become acquainted with you know and you know at the same time um your speech uh, also proves or, or or shows um your 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 level of learning so you know what i mean again you can't you know just automatically assume because a man uses rude speech that he doesn't know anything you know that's where it goes into um emotions you know you know women get emotional when uh even men do too because we in this 65 ass place you know a lot of men don't like to take um chastisement from a lo another man a lot of men do not like to take orders from another man you know and, I, and i'm speaking to myself first and foremost because i've battled that you know <laughs> you know so that's a cut to me but at the same time this thing is about order you know the elder apostles have always pointed it out you know uh with peter and john how john um waited at the um tomb until peter caught up and let peter go in first you know you know, even when um like Israel was numbered, you know, <laughs> that's order. For the vision is yet for a point of time. The vision is what the prophecies. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry away for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So the vision is the prophecies. And although it looked like these things pick up and slow down, pick up and slow down. This is the year to turn up. And a lot of things have taken place this year. You know. If it's just the invasion of uh, Russia. And how, how can you really say it's invasion? Because, you know, them are the same people. But at the same time, it's, 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 it's those Edomites is in cahoots with the Edomites over here in the West, these Babylonian Edomites. And that's why, you know, but um, with all that being said, you know, um, you know, with, if, you know, that's wars and rumors of wars, you know, that's getting intensifying because you got, um, you know, they talk about the UK getting involved and they talk about America already has boots on the ground, which I can believe, but not to digress. It says, verse four, behold, his soul, whose soul? Esau, Edom's soul, which is lifted up because he's proud, is not upright, you know, because it tells you in the scriptures who can make straight what the most high made crook. You know, you know, this is a, a slippery, cunning serpent in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Yea, also because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home. You know, this devil's always out and about in other nations trying to police those nations when you got all these issues here. You know, you got a lot of Americans upset about that. They talking about how you sending all this aid to you Ukraine, but yet and still you literally got all these issues happening on home front. And that's how, you know, America is basically been doing a lot of the stuff that's been coming out. You know, those um, bio um, experiments and, you know, it's a whole bunch of stuff coming out that basically a lot of legal stuff was going on. And Ukraine between America and the, and the Ukraines, U Ukrainians. Verse um, five again, it says, Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heap unto him all people. You know, because he want to be like the Most High. It tells you in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, he's trying to um, be basically um, sit, be as the Most High, you know. Even as um, Isaiah chapter 14 talks about, you know, uh, is this the man? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because well, basically he was, he, he, you know, he's a proud man. He, 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 he's a, put in a position. But when the Lord brings him low, all the nations can be like, was this the man? I'm not going to get it, though. Verse um, 6, shape shall not these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say woe to him, meaning destruction. Let's look that up. Prolong woe, oh alas. Mm. Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long and to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. Ladeth. Uh, to be heavy, a bad sense, in a good sense, rich, honorable, cautiously, 
to make weighty, abounding with, more grievously afflict, boast, be chargeable, glory, great, grievous, to do be had in honor. So laden or honor this thick clay, himself with thick clay. And when you go into that word thick clay, goods, something pledged upon. But when you go into um the blue letter, I forgot the word, a beat, I think it's the a bet. But um it goes into um debt. Matter of fact, just to prove the point, unless they change something on the blue letter, <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised. It's a lock here. Uh, Habakkuk chapter 2. The word is Strong's H 5671 Aftit. 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 And it says thick clay by a false eating. So it's false. You know, this money system is false because like I say, real money is um, gold, silver, you know, land, you know, cattle, things that you could actually utilize. They convince people that paper is is money and, you you know, is used in the society, but it's not real money. You know, now we do what we got to do to get our daily bread, of course. But again, like I say, you know, back in the ancient world, you know, gold, silver or a bartering system, you know, you had people that grew um, had land and they grew corn or grew certain vegetables or grew certain things while you had another person that might have had um, cattle and they were basically you know you know or or, or, or a man like me I might have had cattle and um, uh, another man may have had like a, a, a wheat field or something like that and he had a son I had a daughter so to be able to be beneficial to both of us you know what I mean I would make arrangements and betroth my daughter to his son and then that's two families and two houses joined together. You know, like you see that in the movie, um, the show Game of Thrones, in them ancient movies, you know what I mean? But, um, so yeah, um, so because of this inflation, this is going to affect the whole, um, cut, I mean, the world. Most other currencies are much weaker by comparison, especially in poor countries. The Indian rupee has dropped nearly 10% this year against the dollar. The Egyptian pound, 20%. The Turkish lira and astounding 28 percent and the thing is this you know okay so the, basically these other currencies are becoming weaker because of, and making the dollar more you know valuable but at the same time the the american dollar is inflated it's a bubble you get what i'm saying so when everything pop it's like when the housing market and that's how you know this is a fraudulent ass system because this system constantly brings these same things you have these crashes you know, I mean, they had one in the 70s. You know, I think they said it was a system where like every seven to certain certain amount of years, it repeats. That's why you had like the gas uh, recession in the 70s. You had, you know, you've had multiple recessions over and over because this is a fraudulent fucking system. Um, it reads, uh, Silo Holly 60 sells infant clothing and diaper bags in Istanbul because he needs more lira to buy imported zippers and liners priced in dollars. He has to raise prices for the Turkish customers who struggle to pay him in the much diminished local currency. So that's the thing. This is all a perfect setup, you know, and, and, and perfectly orchestrated and set up to precision by Yahweh Shemir al -Shah because even if that's the case, eventually people ain't going to be able to afford this dollar. Or the goods that sold with this dollar. That's why you got all these companies that's basically laying people off or canceling orders. Because by Christmas time, you should probably be, people ain't about to have no Christmas. And it talks about, where is that at? Um, I think Amos chapter 5, I despise your feast days. You know, these people, literally, these pagan ass holidays that they worship, well, that, that you know, that Murph is, glory <laughs> God. You know, you still, you got people more so trying to escape the, 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 the depression as opposed to really just enjoying themselves. We're waiting for the new year, he said. We'll look into our finances and we'll do downsize accordingly. Rich countries aren't immune. In Europe, which was already teetering towards recession and amid soaring energy prices, one euro is worth less than a dollar for the first time in 20 years. And usually the British pound is always worth more than a dollar. And the British pound has plunged 18% from a year ago. The pound recently flirted with dollar parity after Britain's new prime minister, Liz Truce, announced huge tax cuts that rolled financial markets and led to the ouster of her treasury secretary. Ordinarily, countries could get some benefit from falling currencies because it makes their products cheaper and more competitive 
overseas. But at the moment, any gain from higher exports is muted because economic growth is sputtering almost everywhere. A rising dollar is causing pain overseas in a number of ways. And then if you want to continue to read this, because this is way more long. I mean, it's way longer than I expected. But you got my point. You know, this dollar is inflated. And, and because the dollar is inflated, even though, you know, OK, so it's making it harder for other countries. But it's like the everyday American that utilize it more than anybody, because that's why you're paying more when you go to the grocery store uh, and all that. The only thing that they um, just imagine if you was paying for the high ass gas at the same time as you would <laughs> pay for everything else. And eventually that's going to take place. So uh, I got one closing scripture uh, is, you know, again, I, I quoted it to a degree, but in Revelation, it talks about how, um, you know, um, a penny. This is Revelation chapter six and verse six, Revelation six and verse six. And I heard a voice in the midst in the midst of the four beasts saying a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine so when you go into that word penny the word penny is denarius denarian strong's g 1220 denarion and it goes into a Roman silver coin in the New, it's like in the New Testament time. It took its name from being equal to 10 asses. A number after 217 BC increased to 16, about 3.898 grams or 1375 ounces. It was the principal silver coin of the Roman Empire. From the parable of the laborers in the vineyard, it would seem that a denarius was then the ordinary pay for a day's wages. So when you read that scripture, it's going to, the inflation going to get so bad that it's going to take a day's wages to be able to purchase goods. You know what I mean? You know. And basically it says, when it says, and see thou hurt not that oil and the wine, is going into this truth and the understanding of it. You know, that's why it's so important not to stray from the, the true teachings and the, the doctrine that we have learned. You know, at the end of the day, through the doctrine that we have learned, the men of the Great Millstone, you know, the things that we are saying are coming to pass. The scriptures talk about how you can tell a prophet if the things that are spoken come to pass. That's how you know the Lord sent them. But if the things that they say do not come to pass, that means they're speaking from their own belly, roughly paraphrased. So, you know, these things are happening and we just waiting for, you know, this devil to make his move, you know, which he basically you can see it like it's kind of telegraphed. He want people in a desperate state. So, you know, because you do like 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 that commercial, that Snickers commercial. You're not yourself when you're hungry. If you desperate, you willing to go ahead and accept things that you normally wouldn't. You know, that's one of the reasons why women sell they box. They cool buy, you know, what I mean, out of desperation. You got some that's just naturally like, you know promiscuous but for the most part is be out of desperation a woman that naturally wouldn't never think about it in a desperate situation they would so um with that being said we living in the year to turn up and may you how about some y'all should continue to turn up for these wicked ass fucking demonotic ass people so um if you're so-called black hispanic native american similar indian west west indian or haitian i implore you to come back to the laws to the statutes and to the commandments of your power your how about you shot or you will be destroyed with that i want to give all praises all honor and all glory to call a lawyer like yahweh by hashem yahushai by hashem double honors to my apostles the elders of great millstone who teach and do rule well peace and salutations to the akim across the four corners of the earth pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity as well as risking their lives as well as their freedom to do so now more so than ever shalom to the aquat as well as the akim out there listening and learning lord willingly this is edifying shalom to the israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations appearing like the other nations but whom subscribe to this truth to you i say shalom it's a brother yahweh sop out of the gms cleveland church a fellow servant coming at you with another lesson through the spirit through the power of the yahweh and um till next time i'm able to come with another lesson shalom shalom shalom